So we're going to start off with compiling our program. All I'm going to do is I'm going to GCC this tiny shell with wall and error. I'm going to run my program, or I'm going to run that, and it's going to compile with no errors, no errors, no warnings. And to show off our program running, I've created uh, just a, sh a shell program that uh, runs the trace code with uh, our shell, and then another sh uh, shell program that runs the trace code with the reference shell. So I'm going to do that by just quickly splitting up my shell. And I'm going to run the THS test shell. There we go. And they'll clear and run both at the same time, hopefully. And as you can see with the first few, they are the exact same output as they go down. Uh, they do get a little bit desynced just because of how my computer's running. And running our program, we have created uh, 16 working test cases with the only one not currently working being number 16, um, running the process, uh, the stop command and the pause command through a different process. Uh, and so the reference shell is finished. This one's finishing up. And the output for 17 is the exact same. Right before is when it uh, changes. So it sends off an error. And that is the only difference between the two shells. This is our code walkthrough portion where we're going to talk about eval, built-in command, do BGFG, wait FG, and then the three handlers. And we're going to start with eval. So eval starts by using the helper function parse line to take whatever is in the command line and give and give us what arg v and argc. If argc is zero, then we have we don't have anything in the command line, so there's no command. So we just do nothing. Then we'll check if the command that is if the command is a built-in command. If it isn't, then we continue. Well running the command. First we uh I think we first we block sig child signals. And then uh, start working with imp we start uh checking for input files, input and output redirections, I believe. To check for the input and output redirections, we iterate over the arguments, the command line arguments, and then if we find the less sensible we do input redirection. But finding taking the name of the file and opening it and then producing an error if it's not found or some other error occurs while trying to open it. And if we find a greater than sign, we do output redirection. And then we open that file, same thing. If there's an issue, it will be less than zero and we print out an error statement. Otherwise, we found the files for the output and input redirections. After that, we will we will fork. And if there's, if there's a fork error, then we would just say, we would just print a standard error saying it failed. Then in the child, we want to unblock, unblock uh, the signals. So after that, if we have an input file that we found earlier for the input redirection, we then do the actual input redirection and take the standard input and put it into the input file. And once that's done, we close oh. the file. Otherwise, if it, there was a file for output redirection found, we use that file and direct the output of the commands put into the shell to this file. And then once that is done, we close that file. After that, we will grab the args, grab a, the path for the executable that we want to run from argv. You know, check if there's the... Uh, the end symbol at the end to denote that the, the we want to run the executable in the in the background, and we will prune that from our v. After and then we will do exec ve to run to actually run our executable now. There's a if if exec fails, then we will print an error statement and exit. And in our parent, we will check. In the parent, we'll check if the if we want whether we want to run the executable in the foreground or the background and add it to the jobs list as depending on whether it's running in the background or foreground if it's if the if, if the job is run if the uh, executable is running in the foreground we will call wait fg in order to wait wait for it to finish uh, executing before you return and uh, allow input again uh moving on from there we can go down to built-in command 
The only command is a relatively is a relatively simple function. It's just a set of if and else if statements, just checking for the various built-in commands that we have. We have quit, jobs, bg, fg, and quit will just exit the terminal and just close exit the program. Jobs will list any currently running running or stopped jobs. And if and if they have if they enter bg or fg, then we will run the do bg fg command. Which speaking of, we will talk about right now. For the do bgfg command, the first thing that we do is find the amount of arguments in the command line that's calling bg or fg. If this amount is less than two, we raise an error as that means there is no PID or GID given with the call to the command. After that, we check if it's a GID by checking if there's a percent sign in the ID given or if it's a PID when there's no percent sign and we convert the ID into a number. Using this, we later go on to check and find the job by using either get job PID or get job GID, depending on which value we found earlier passed by the user. Then after that, if the command line was called with FG, we set the job state to the foreground. And after that, we must wait for the new foreground process to finish before continuing. Thus, we call wait FG. Otherwise, if it's called with BG, we set the job state to background and then print out information about it. After that, we send the continue signal so that the job continues its execution. After that, if the given GID or PID is not found, we raise errors for each case specifically. So we've talked about uh, wait FG a lot in our uh, eval function and our do BG FG. Looking at the FG function, we have to create two sets and set up a set where um, sig child is blocked and then one empty set. And we start off by blocking sig child and we check when we receive that signal. And if that signal is received, we check if the job is still in the foreground. And if it is, uh, the program continues waiting. And as long as the program is not in the foreground anymore, we can simply unmask or set it back to the empty mask, uh, break the loop and return to allow the process to keep running. As for the rest of the signals, um, sig child, uh, all we're doing is we are waiting to see if the program has fully exited. And if it has, we delete the job from the job list um, as long as uh, we get the correct uh, PID. As for SIGINT, as if they press control C and they want to cancel the program entirely, all we do is make sure it's not the uh, parent file, uh, parent process. We kill it with the correct signal. Uh, we print out some standard uh, usage message, and then we delete it from the actual job list, just like SIG child. And for stop, we do the same thing by killing it with the stop signal, uh, making sure that it's not a parent. And this time, instead of deleting it, we set the state to stopped so that later on in our do bgfg command, it can be sent back the signal for continue so it can restart processing. And that is all seven of the required functions. OK, so for the additional testing section, we have created five custom tests. And I have created a shell program that runs them all after each other with the our shell and the reference shell. Uh, looking at the custom tests, we have uh, multiple sig ints to test, uh, multiple sig stops to test, uh, changing the pro or stopping the process and putting it back into the foreground multiple times. We have scenarios where we redirect the output and rewrite it. And our last test is uh, with multiple input redirections. First, we're reading from an out file, and then myspin.c. And I will run them both at the same time with the custom tests, ours on the left, and the reference on the right. And as you can see, multiple stops don't mess up our program. Multiple sig ints don't mess up our program. Uh, multiple foreground calls don't mess up our program. Uh, this one is the input redirection right here. In out file, you can see if I open up out file, it should say CSC 209 again. 
And lastly, first we read from Outfile, which is right here. And then we read from my spin, which is this code. This is our issues encountered section, where we're going to talk about eval first. So some of the issues I came across in eval was actually figuring out the exec function and how to work with it. Because one of the things I didn't know was that I did. You don't have to like when you're running a program, you have to like like an executable. You have to write like dot slash to like indicate like relative path. I did not know that. I didn't like after reading the documentation. I didn't know that like that I like I didn't need to like trim that or like or take any or, or modify the input for that. And I consulted with my group members, and turns out I didn't need to do that. They were very nice at telling me that. <laughs> they uh, saved me a lot of headaches writing that bit. Uh, moving right along to redirection. Yes. Yeah, so when it comes to the input and output redirection. There was a lot of issues with mostly relating to like the input printing twice in the console when it was being run. A lot of like doubling issues like that, which we figured out over time were due to fork being called multiple times because at first the input redirection code was separate from the rest of the code and it called fork one time by itself. And then the rest of the code, when it handles the process is normally also called fork, which is causing everything to happen two times. Luckily, I was able to look at the code that my group members had made and alter my code to use more of their original code within it and just place my code, place the code for the input and output redirection within that code so that it worked together and fork only had to be called once, which then allowed it to work normally. Uh, moving right along to our largest issue throughout the experience uh, was signals in general, but also uh, wait FG. Uh, for the longest time, we had used busy waiting to figure out if the fore uh, foreground PID was the PID that we were waiting for. And if it was, we just continued waiting. Um, and then we figured out that we needed to set up um, some sets, some sig sets. But our biggest problem was figuring out what order to block them in and using sig suspend um, and how it worked and in general, when the waiting should stop. And the biggest issue with it was there was no way to for us to um, check as a group. And it would just be me uh, trying something else, a group member trying something else out. Um, and it ended up being very similar to at least the eval function with sig set, sig add set, empty set, all that stuff, where we were able to pull from different sections that were already created and sort of piece by piece build up a working weight FG. Lastly, for the section where we talk about what we did personally, starting with the eval function. Um, I wrote the like the bones of the eval function. I got most of the basic like ideas down. I blocked out what like what it should have done at each point and slowly expanded on that. Um, I also did the uh, what was the name of the function? The uh, default, the built-in commands. That's what it was. The built. The, I did uh, the built-in commands. And whoops. Moving back up to eval, we have the input redirection stuff. Yeah, so I did the input and output redirection and making it work with the rest of the code that was already made. And lastly, in the eval function, I came in and I set up all these signals so we can block the signals until they've been added to the jobs. Um, and that's what I did in eval. We already talked about built in, all done. Uh, with do bgfg, I came in and I wrote some of the uh, struct down here for the actual job state. It was more of a group effort, though. Over here I, with the JID. Uh, I block. I block this stuff. I blocked out most, like the majority of the logic, but I hadn't actually written like the full implementation. Yeah, and I helped with finding the JID and PID and converting those. That was my main contribution to this part of the code. And then, as mentioned earlier, the rest of it, a lot of it was a group effort. Moving on yeah. to Wait FG. Originally, I had created the busy waiting solution that we figured out just wasn't going to work. And this section is cobbled together from eval and as a group project. And all of us worked on this section to get it working uh, correctly. And then lastly, uh, I handled creating the handlers, um, as well as the different job uh, 
keeping track of the different jobs with delete job and p and the states and stuff like that. 